Have you ever wrung dry a wet cloth, wrung it bone white dry, with only the grip of your fingers and the muscles of your arms? You will remember how, having stretched cloth between your hands, you begin by twisting one end, holding the other firmly, so that the water is corkscrewed from its hiding place. At first the water spurts out easily, but later you will find yourself screwing with both hands in different directions. Then, at last, at last, you will believe the cloth to be dry. But in the next second, the tip of a finger will quiver tragically as it touches some cold, bitten veil of damp clinging deep down in the interlaced threads. Such, then, was the task of the captives. captives were first thrown into their cubicles. The long sheet was heavy with water. There were four rooms. Take room three. This housed four people, two married couples. All of them wanted freedom. The captives were to wring the sheet dry. This sheet must be purged of every moisture. When the task was finally completed, then the women and men would be granted their freedom. They would be released. However, they were not equal to the task. They arrived at the sheet punctually, and with conscience satisfied, they put insufficient effort into their actual work. One of the women became pregnant. Her child was born into the steam box, but under the influence of Room 3's routine, that child could never be free. In another of the rooms, Room 2, there were four individualists. There was one man who can best be described as a fumbler. He worked hard and earnestly, but he fumbled. Although he felt that he concentrated his whole effort on the job of ringing, his mind would wander to other things. There was one man in room two who, in business, in love, in all relationships, attempted to apply the shortcut system to life's tasks. Once he bribed one of the warders. The warders, of course, can never be bribed. <laughs> He blocked up the pipe through which the guards poured out the steam. The next morning, like a mushroom, another pipe had grown in the side of the first. Another of the men in room two was a simple, quiet fellow. The others took no interest in him, but his section of the sheet was white and quite dry. One man had been frightened by a sheet when he was young. Now some thirty years later, the man has forgotten the scene but somehow his hands cannot touch the long sheet without a great sensation of uneasiness. Room 4. Those who never saw it at all. These people seldom did much work. The immensity of the task had long ago disheartened them. Their minds were not big enough to envisage the better future. They had enough. These people were squalid and small. There were four of them in cubicle one. At first, when they had been dropped through the skylight, when they saw the long sheet, when they slowly accustomed themselves to the idea of what lay before them, they were profoundly shocked. But they were good people. They set themselves to work with body and soul, gently but with strength, humbly yet fearlessly, towards the only end of value, freedom. Unproductive? The long sheet of senseless drudgery? Yes, but why not? In whatever other sphere of labor could we have produced ultimately anything? It is not the production that counts, but the life lived in the spirit during production. Production, the tightening of muscles, the weaving of the hands, the pouring forth of shaped materials. This is only an employment for the nervous body, the dying legacy of the hunter's will to movement. 
let the hands weave, but at the same time let the spirit search. Give the long sheet its rightful place, and concentrate on a better understanding of the freedom that is our real object. One day, seven years later, the wet gray sheet dawned a bright white, dry as desert ivory, dry as marble dust. They asked for freedom. I told them, you already have it. Freedom lies in an attitude of the spirit. There is no other freedom. Okay. <laughs> okay, great, I started recording. Okay, don't talk. You're moving. <laughs> 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 <laughs>